Strange All Right is a show about people, places, and things in the great Northwest. People doing things a little left of center, making things uniquely their own. And you're going to find in this little journey that some of those things come from deep down inside of us. I'm Regan Lane. And I'm Raymond Hayden. And this is Strangely All Right. Hello and welcome to Strangely All Right Television. I'm Raymond Hayden. I'm Regan Lane. Our guest today is local to the Pacific Northwest and grew up in and around the burb of T-Town, Tacoma, Washington. His natural artistic qualities are what give him his drive. That's right. We will be visiting today with the amazing Jeremy Gregory, who is a muralist, puppet maker, and illustrator. He's also the founder of the Candy Teeth Creative. His artwork is some of the coolest, quirkiest stuff you'd ever see. Absolutely. And any explanation that Raymond and I could give you guys wouldn't do it justice. We're going to take you inside. We're going to take a look at this amazing artist's stuff. Ready to do it, Raymond? Let's do this thing. All right. Tacoma artist Jeremy Gregory brings his art to life through lovingly handcrafted posable puppets. His passion for turning his edgy and gritty style of art into 3D puppets started when he began tossing the idea around to friends and peers. After having enough detractors say it wasn't advisable, he decided to prove them wrong. He now has over 30 handcrafted puppets in his collection, which he describes as his own children, with each of them having their own unique backstory. His characters range from lovable street urchins to skater kids and birds. He is already gaining recognition with his puppets locally and had a zombie character featured on the cover of Tacoma's Volcano Weekly. Jeremy is a graduate of the Arts Institute of Seattle and currently teaches graphic arts in downtown Tacoma at School of the Arts High School. His artwork has been all over the Pacific Northwest. Gregory's talent has been recognized by City Arts Magazine as Tacoma's top comic artist. He's had an alt comic series in the magazine titled True Grit that started in 08 and the magazine called Gregory one of our best Tacoma discoveries. Right. Jeremy, hey, thanks for inviting us into your studio, man. This is very cool. Yeah, no problem. So, hey, when did you discover that you had artistic abilities? Um, well, I did it ever since I was a kid, like uh, coloring. Did you color in the lines or outside the lines? Um, I wasn't allowed to color outside the lines. You, you got beat or something? <laughs> yeah, totally beat. No, my mom My mom used coloring as a thing. I was hyperactive, and it, like, totally mellowed me out. Really? So she, that's all she wanted me to do is color. She's like, color this whole book. But she, um, yeah, she just was like, you don't, you don't color outside the lines, sure. and you darken the lines afterwards. Oh, so that's follow the key. All the thing, you know, was your mom, I mean, did you have any other people in your family that were artistic? Was your mom artistic? Yeah, my mom was artistic. Or just mean. You color inside the lines. No, she was artistic, but to that point. Like, that she point. was she was that person that, like, color inside the lines, so everything isn't up to her standard for huh. her. You huh. know, like, if she's drawing, it's not up to her. She wants it to be better, you know? And sure. it's tight. So, you know, it, that that's great. I mean, you said, so your mom had some of that artistic stuff in there, but so coloring inside the lines, doing the thick line, that's all cool, but, I mean, the stuff that you're doing now is so out there so quirky so you know tim burton so um i mean what did, did you initially from a kid when you were a kid um when you realized you had some abilities did you start kind of going in that direction or is that something that developed over time um well yeah when i was a kid it went that direction i would i would use it as a i would use it as like therapy i would use it as a weapon i would use it for everything i needed uh, a power for sure, you know sure. what i'm saying like if I was sad, I would draw. If I was mad, I would draw. But it would. Yeah, to bully drawings. you, you draw them like with a really uh, weird yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Do you have some of those from when you were growing up? No, but I have some from lately. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, what were some of your biggest obstacles and challenges in getting started and doing your art? Well, I was just doing my art, and I didn't really have an outlet, mm -hmm. so I was just making it, and then I'd like put it in a drawer or something. And then um, after I got my first studio, it was with a bunch of glass blowers, and so they brought a bunch of people in to like spray paint the walls and paint it up. And one of those people um, hooked me up with Artifact, which is uh, it was like a, a art collective in Seattle mm -hmm. that had monthly shows, and they kind of got a thing where it was like started it rolling, you know, so I could have shows all the time. Or I'd read on your blog that yeah. you what you wrote you uh, drew pictures when you were angry mm -hmm. when you were happy it was what you did to express yourself so when you were getting started what was the family supportive did they move you in that direction or is that something you just did because it's what you do I think 
I, d- I think uh, in my later, like now, mm-hmm. I think back, and I think they were more supportive than I was giving them credit. You know what I'm saying? Fair enough, fair enough. Because I was doing the parent, like, against the parents. Yeah. Or against the parent. How come <laughs> they're not doing it the way I want them to? Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. But um, the art, it wasn't really a serious thing to anybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just like, oh, he's good at that. But, like, it's that's the extent of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did, and you do so many different mediums. Did, did you know early on that this is what you wanted to do with your life? I've, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do art. Or no, not at all. There were some little twists and turns well, going I, I, up? Well, I kind of thought you couldn't. Okay. Like, that was, it was like, uh, yeah, you can't do that for your life, you know? That's like something you do when you're mad or when you're sad. When you, you sure. Know, you know what yeah, I'm yeah. And so um, I didn't look at it as a career, you Okay. Know? But then, like, after my 20s, I went to school, like, when I was, like, 28. Mm-hmm. And so that was after I already had all these experiences and it like totally helped me. If I would have went to the school right after high school, it would have, it, it, I don't think it would have worked out the same. I think I would have bailed out or been in a cubicle somewhere. Was that like an art school? Yeah, I went to the uh, art institute. Oh, okay, okay. And then that, and does that start with drawing? Because I, I, I don't know anything about in terms of how you get groomed to be an artist so yeah well oh you mean at school yeah yeah well that school is more of a design school i think i should have went to an art school like okay. more of a fine art school mm-hmm. but um because i went there and like i was against the computer they were just switching everything into the computer okay and so like half my school was learning um like old school style mm-hmm. and then right halfway through they um halfway through they switched it to now we're going to learn all these new programs and it's going to be so much easier than the other way you know and so I just didn't ever use the computer Mm -hmm. and um, the teachers were mad but like it was like me showing them I could do it normal old school like with my hands so uh, Jeremy my friend here had a question (laughs) yeah and I'm not going to make up a voice for him but he wanted to know uh, how did uh, how did skateboard you know, that being a crime, how did that feed into your artistic future or, you know, your ambitions, aspirations? Skateboarding is part of, like, everything that I'm doing now. Are you actually talking to him? Yeah. You he asked the question. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, yeah, that's right, right that's right. Um, <laughs> but uh, skateboarding, I grew up skateboarding here, uh-huh. you know? And uh, it was, like, when I found, like, my fake family, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you leave your house and you get a group. And that's that's that was mine, and uh, we would just skate every weekend downtown. It used to be more of a ghost town than it is now. And so, in skating, is when I learned. Like I did group sports and all that, and it was hor- a horrible experience, all of them. What do you mean in school? Yeah, like just in school like or, stuff or yes, okay. yeah, like okay. soccer, soccer, baseball, all those. Uh, the team player sports. I wasn't. I didn't realize that I needed a like single person sport you know uh you don't play with, well with others is that no it? no and um and i would get lippy with the coaches and oh. like it get turns into a weird like uh what's it called uh, it's called insubordination yeah <laughs> it's stuck on but right. i learned that from skateboarding which and it's also it's all insubordination into my art yeah oh cool, cool cool well it's from skating and it's from skating like when we were skating we were getting uh like we would just get chased out everywhere we went and um, so it turns into like a us against them thing, sure, sure. you know. New York, the big city. Just yesterday, Jimmy stood in Central Park. A tearful farewell to his friends and world. But a new day dawns and Jimmy, as well as all newcomers, must adventure out into the great unknown. local Tacoma guy yeah yeah I grew yeah. up I grew up uh, in Northeast 
um, kind of in between Northeast and Browns Point, a place called Crescent Heights. What high school did you go to? Stadium. stadium. I went to Stadium until junior year, and then I um, got moved to Michigan, Harbor Springs, to finish it out. Michigan? Yeah, that's where my family's from. Oh, okay. And uh, they were trying to get me to stop skating, because like, I was skating too much and not doing home. I didn't have homework ever. Oh, hold, okay. hold on for a second. So, yeah. did you have like a skateboard intervention or something like that? Yeah, yeah, mom. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, a mom. Well, it turned into where it really like I wasn't gonna graduate, and like there was no there was no way to stop me besides like four feet of snow. So you graduated <laughs> from school in Michigan, yeah. and, and, and did all that, and basically you weren't doing any of the homework or any of the nonsense because you loved to skateboard. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still skateboard? Um, I roll around. <laughs> I try not to jump. <laughs> but yeah, I roll around still. So. Nice. I don't think I can ever stop it. It's like when you're walking, you're mad. <laughs> now, when you were in high school, was art a big part of your life then, even at that point? Um, in high school, I never, uh, at stadium, I never took art. I took um, pottery okay. the whole time. And then um, when I went to Michigan, it was a super small school. Like the graduating class was like 120 or something. And um, so the art room, the art class was every single thing. So it was like photography, pottery, all that. But they didn't um, utilize it all. So like I asked if I could do pottery and they're like, yeah, there's all this stuff back here that we don't use. And then I asked if I could do photography and they're like, yeah, sure, there's a dark room and all this stuff. But um, it wasn't part of their curriculum, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, and the drawing part, so that you were still just doing sketches like we had talked about, just that's what you did yeah. in your spare time. And I always did cartoons. Uh huh. Yeah. What was your first cartoon character that you remember? Um, I don't remember the name of him, it's the worst. But there's one right after, the very first one, there was one called Flip. And uh, I, I would like spray paint him around and like draw him all the time. Wait, you're, he's involved in a lot of things, aren't you? I mean, you do the, uh, like the, you know, the illustrations and the cartoons and, yeah. and all that, um, the puppets, um, murals. Yeah. You do murals, right? What is yeah. your, so what's your favorite uh, mural project you've been involved in? Um, the one, uh, this last summer I did one in uh, New York for a tax uh, oh, wow. office, right? A tax office? A cool tax office. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was a buddy that I lived with in Olympia, mm -hmm. and he moved to um, New York, and he was a stand-up for a really long time, and then he just quit and was doing taxes. <laughs> what, 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 was it, what was the theme of the mural? It was uh, weird and... Oh, there was one other word. I can't remember. I hope he doesn't watch this. Uh, there was one other word. Anyways, it was make up whatever you want. Okay, weird and something else. Mm -hmm. Well, how did you, and how did you how did you get involved with that project and, and some of the other mural projects? And how would you people out there who will want to be involved? How how would you? Well, the most of the murals. What kind of advice can you give them? Well, most of the murals I've done have been through the Tacoma uh, mural project, right? Okay. And so that's like a yearly thing they do through the summer. And uh, you can go to the website, and then you can apply to be one of the artists on the roster. Okay. And then um, when it comes time, then businesses will apply. Like if they have a building that gets tagged a lot or is dilapidated or whatever, they'll um, apply to get one of these murals that's free because the city pays for it. Sure. And so then it makes that spot look way better. So the people that apply then, is it like a group of people that you all do a mural, that you all come together, people you haven't met before, do you know them? No, it, w it was like that in the beginning, uh -huh. and it slowly, because it's changing all the time, mm -hmm. and so now it's at a point where everybody that went through the program, there was like student artists, and everybody that went through the program um, now is on the roster. So now everybody just does their own mural, and like, um, you can have other people with you, but like mine, the one I did this last summer for Tacoma, um, I just did it by myself. I want to do it by myself. Uh -huh. Like that's the, that's the way I like it. So your puppets. Yeah. I love them. Tell, tell us how that started and how it's kind of part of Tacoma's identity, you doing these puppets. Um, well, it started, uh, I always like every couple years I would make like a finger puppet that, uh, that would talk, you know, but no arms or body, you know. And, um, the city, Tacoma, had a program where they were um, giving artists uh, a long white piece of paper that said, uh, you'll like Tacoma. And so um, you're supposed to go and take pictures of it, places, 
and uh, places that you think are cool or artistic or art or art, 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 art. And um, so that thing was horrible. It was black and white and it was super long and skinny so it made a bad composition no matter how you set it up. And so I made a little, um, like a picket sign that, that said you'll like to come on it. And then I made a puppet to hold it, Williams. And, uh, and that's when it started. Because um, then I started taking pictures of him for that project. But then I took like a thousand pictures of him everywhere. And then pretty soon the sign's down. And then pretty soon he threw the sign over there. And then um, I started making other puppets. And then it just grew into what it is now. Each of the puppets have their a, a life yeah. that, that you tell us about William. Well, Williams is, um, he's like, uh, he's gritty, dirty like Tacoma. He has, um, he's like the grandfather of these puppets, right? But he's like the badass grandfather. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He used to ride motorcycles and like beat people up. That kind of stuff. Drink, <laughs> like Reagan. Drink a lot like Reagan, <laughs> exactly. Like, he he made a one. face like, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't work with him very long, but like, uh, that was his story. Is that he's more like the grandpa. Who, who are your favorites of, um, of the, your characters? Well, it's the same thing as kids. <laughs> 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 Sounds like a stupid answer, but that's true. Um, Bucky's the like, main one for the whole brand of the Believables, right? That's mm -hmm. what they're called, the Believables. Um, and he's like the badass skater that's like the pro, that's the one that sticks out. He's been, he's just good, super good. He's kind of has a nondescript personality because he's so, everything's always good. And like his, his personality is like the least out of everybody mm -hmm. because it's always just his teeth, that's it. Anything on the future with the puppets? Um, I'm, I'm planning on working on a book um, with another artist called Rick Frausto is his name. And uh, I was in a show in LA and he was in the, in the same show, but he makes uh, these like same kind of like puppets, but they don't move, like a, just a sculpture, but out of all junk and like metal and stuff welded together and stuff. Well, I've and seen some of that stuff. He's really, really, he's really good at it. It's like, uh, I was just, I was in, I was like in love with him right when I saw all this stuff, you know? You heard it here first. Yeah, that's where it came, this is where it happened. Well, so you're, you're so you, all the stuff you're doing, the puppets and the, the murals and, Everything you do, you, uh, you, you're an artist, but you're also a teacher, correct? Uh, well, I'm an adjunct artist, yeah, at yeah. the School of the Arts, Tacoma right. School of the so Arts. So Soda, yeah. which is known around here, obviously. So how has be being a graphic art teacher there um, you know, contributed to you as, with your growth as an artist and an individual? First of all, it's like a small, it's a small portion. It's like an hour and a half, twice a week, you know? But the, the input I get from that is so good for my career. Like um, we have a we'll, like we'll do the puppets for example, we we have a, an assignment where they make a puppet right, and um, and so we go through the whole process of designing the puppet. They make the the image of the puppet before they're designing it before they're making the real one. They I learned I learned so much while they're doing theirs. You know they're like oh but why wouldn't I do the, something like this? You know and I'm like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then later on you take him on a hike with yeah. a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the teaching part just adds. It, it, yeah. Is good. there is there one, do you have one story you can think of with a student that they come up with something that just kind of made you, wow, why didn't I ever think of that? Yeah, all the time though. All the time. Yeah, oh, really? especially okay. making the puppets, because I'm making the puppets all the time, and they, look, they come at it with a fresh, fresh eyeballs. You know, I'm making the same thing over and over and like changing the head and the hands or whatever, you know, I'm not, I'm not uh, thinking of different ways to do stuff. And like, I just helped um, a different artist from Seattle, uh, Joey Brooks is his name. And uh, he was gonna be in a puppet show. And so he came here and learned how to make a puppet, right? So from he you? went through, yeah, like I showed him how to make my armature and like my whole secrets, you know? Right, right. But they're not secrets. And, Cause I want everybody to do it, so it goes everywhere. Another Strange the All Right TV in the books, and it was a lot of fun, wasn't it? It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, thank you for 
visiting with us, coming in and checking out what we do here. We're grateful for the people that we work with and having the opportunity to do this. So Absolutely. hope to see you again in the future. Take care, everybody. See ya. Nom 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 nom